In the first five years of the 1940s, land devoted to wheat expanded by nearly three million acres. The speculators and suitcase farmers returned. Parcels that had sold for $5 an acre during the Dust Bowl now commanded prices of 50, 60, sometimes $100 an acre. Even some of the most marginal lands were put back into production. The same process, Howard Fennell warned, is starting again in the very same place. I always said I was the only one who could remember those dreadful days, Caroline confided to a friend, adding, people have simply assumed it couldn't happen again. Then, in the early 1950s, when the wet cycle ended and a two-year drought replaced it, the dust storms picked up once more. But the damage to the land was mitigated by those farmers who had continued using Howard Fennell's conservation practices. And because nearly four million acres had been purchased by the government during the Dust Bowl and permanently restored as national grasslands, the soil didn't blow as much. At least a few lessons had been learned. We want it now. And if, it's, if it makes money now, it's a good idea. But it isn't necessarily it's a good idea. If the things we're doing are going to mess up the future, it wasn't a good idea. Don't deal on the moment. Take the long-term look at things. I mean, the, the most basic lesson was be humble. Respect the land itself. Listen to what it's trying to tell you. If, if the wind blows 60, 70 miles an hour for 50% of the year, there's a reason why only one thing is growing there, and it's native grass. Don't try to put things in place there that don't belong there. Listen to the land itself. But now, instead of looking to the skies for rain, many farmers began looking beneath the soil where they believed a more reliable and irresistible supply of water could be found. The vast Ogallala Aquifer, an underground reservoir stretching from Nebraska to North Texas, filled with water that had seeped down for centuries after the last ice age. With new technology, farmers could pump the ancient water up, irrigate their land, and grow other crops like feed corn for cattle and pigs, which require even more moisture than wheat. The only thing that's holding that ground together is that irrigation water that comes out of the Ogallala. The Ogallala is about 100 feet deep on the average. We've used over 50 feet of it now. We've got about 20 years of water left under these eight states or these portions of these eight states and it's disappeared and it's gonna be gone in 20 years. If you lose the water, you're gonna lose the land. And that's it in a nutshell. My folks put in one of the first irrigation wells and we thought it was a great idea. As I look back at it now, it was the beginning of a bad idea. Having irrigation water permitted us to do some things that weren't good for the long term. And some of these days, I'll be gone, but somebody is going to be out of water. Folks are going to have trouble getting enough drinking water. And they'll look back and say, and to think, back there in the 50s and 60s, they used up our drinking water to raise hog feed. I think the Dust Bowl can happen again, most emphatically it can happen again. It can become a creeping Sahara. The Sahara Desert, a few thousand years ago, was a savanna. We know that it's possible to turn from savanna to a stark desert, and there's no reason to think that uh, it can't happen in the middle of North America.